Hello and welcome in honor of April Fool's Day, which I did look up some of the history on and there are so many different possible stories that it could have originated from. It's actually quite interesting and I encourage you to look that up yourself. Um, but in honor of April Fool's Day, we're going to do some like April Fool's pick a card kind of. I'm going to do two different readings. Okay. I asked in the Tarot Nerds group. Hey, who has a good, like, fool-themed spread? So, um, I got two, and one of them was just a description, and one of them was a, like, a, um, like a meme one. Not like a meme, like, it's funny and a joke, but, like, which is funny because April Fool's. Anyway, um, it was, um, posted by Labyrinthos, and the other one was, um, from a gentle person, I don't know, named Wade G. I don't know if, um, they want their name blasted on the internet, so I will not do the full name but thank you Wade and to the person who shared the Labyrinthos one so shout outs to them um I did not come up with these spreads on my own but uh so we're gonna do this kind of like pick a card style I would encourage you honestly to read or read watch both of them um and see which one resonates most with you um that's kind of the the angle I'm going with because I feel like in doing this like I would normally just do pick a card and and just show you the decks I'm going to do a separate deck for each one um and just maybe pick your deck whichever deck resonates best then you know that's your reading but you know pick, you know take what you uh take what resonates leave what doesn't um but we are going to start with the one from Wade Miss Mr. Wade, I'm assuming gender, sorry. Uh, but, so this is, I drew it out. That's what it looks like um, based on his their description. And uh, so that's what we're going to do. We put the Fool card in the center, which I have already separated out. Oh yeah, hi. Welcome if you're new. If you're not, welcome back. Um, we do weird, weird, weird random tarot readings on, you know, different kind of subjects and uh, you know, kind of current events, but like with a more uh, spiritual kind of nuanced uh, twist. So um, I also do witchy unboxing videos and Metaphysical Mondays, which I'm thinking about turning into a podcast because YouTube has a new podcast feature. So let me know if that's something you're interested in. If you, like me, will sit in your car and listen to podcasts that are actually YouTube videos <laughs> or listen to YouTube videos that don't require viewing. Um, a lot of, I think the videos I do are similar to that. So I'm thinking about just, you know, kind of doing that structure. We'll see. Let me know what you think about that. Um, but so this, we don't have a name for this. This is going to be our first full, I guess we'll call it first full reading. We're using the Vivid Journey Tarot for this. The other reading, if you do want to go by which deck and just choose one to watch, I will timestamp like where the next one starts. Um, the first one is Vivid Journey, which um, I don't have the box for anymore. This is what the back of the card looks like. The second one will be with Curious Creatures, Terror of the Curious Creatures. I love this one. It's a new one. I have an unboxing video if you want to see more of those cards. All right, let's get into it. So for this first one, um, this is the Fool. And then we put a card in the direction that the Fool is headed. So these two positions, let me scoot this over. These two positions will be switched if you're Fool in your deck, if you want to do this spread yourself. Um, and do a more personalized, less general reading. This is more of a general collective type reading um, for the month of April. So um, if you want to do this at home, I am sharing the whole spread. Um, feel free to uh, do this. I didn't create it. I'm not taking credit for it. Um, I'm sure it, it can be shared. All right, let's let's get into it. So if your fool is facing the other direction, depending on your deck, um, because I believe the Curious Creatures deck, it is facing the other direction. Um, so whichever direction your fool is facing, that's the direction they're headed. Um, we're going to, I didn't shuffle these yet. We're going to put a card in the direction that the fool is headed. That will be where you're invited to take a leap of faith. So that is the energy of where you're headed or where you might want to consider heading for the month of April. All right. just once is what I'm feeling okay okay well there we have it and then I just made a big mess there's um the direction that we're heading it's kind of interesting they're headed in the same direction it's almost like this fool energy is like um 
it's it's following it's like a following kind of situation that word is coming out very strong they also have similar like she the, she um i'm assuming because the hair who knows um this character now this deck i love um for and this is a great example of one of the things i love about this deck some of the cards the character is shadowed like this and for me with this deck that indicates um a more um like shadow side of yourself or um inner part of yourself and not necessarily your outer influences just to point that out um because it did come up there and he is also holding a long blade you know like the stick that is carrying their belongings i don't know what 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 do they put in those bags you know when they run away anyway um <laughs> I feel like it's a kid with their Legos in a bag um, tied to a stick. I guess nowadays we would just uh, pack a backpack. Anyway, <laughs> but I feel like this is like a following thing, like almost like this page who is normally an energy of um, like naivety, um, newness, similar energy as the fool. So I feel like it's saying like your new journey is a new journey. Like this is something that um, perhaps you're going with someone on, like somebody will be joining you almost like follow the leader is kind of the energy that I'm getting here. So the, the, the energy you're in being invited to um, take a leap of faith into would be potentially with someone else. Um, this is the, the newness. Now this could be pages are also sometimes, um, seen as children or a child. So take that if it resonates. Um, this could involve a child, um, your own child perhaps, or even because I did point out the shadow aspect of this or the inner self aspect of this card, this, um, this could be your inner child. This could be reflecting your inner child to you. Um, so if there is inner child work, so let's get some more cards to get some more context. Um, and then the next card is going to go on the other side of the fool, behind the fool. This is the comfort zone that you're having trouble leaving behind, um, that you're having difficulties letting go of something uh, there. So let's get that card out there. What is the comfort zone? the world. So this, this could have many meanings. Um, this could have many, um, energies for you. So this could be, um, representative of manifestations. Um, that I, I like to see that in the world card as well. It's almost like, um, like being gifted the world, um, like, you know, this, the divine entity pictured here, um, kind of like handing of the world to you, um, your desires, all of your, all of your things that you want. Um, very interesting uh, thing that I want to point out here, the similarity between these two cards. They're, that is so interesting because it's so similar to this in one way and so similar to this. They are facing away from each other. Even the world card is also facing away from the fool, just like the page is facing away from the fool. There's a similarity. We have the sun in the background and we have the wreath in the background. So we have that cycle energy, right? Um, but also the hair... It's kind of like similar style. Now that is something that it does in this deck with feminine um, presenting uh, characters. Um, it does kind of style the hair that way. But the way it's kind of like doing the flow and the little um, curve at the end, I, I feel like this is like ugh, the outer self. Like the inner self wants to go in toward the childlike energy. Um, like you're being invited to leave that childlike energy or enter that childlike um, and energy uh, within yourself. And this is more like that outer you, the shell. And then like this kind of also feels like a shell, like it's it's surrounding her. Um, and then we have like the, the draping of the fabric also kind of wrapped around that. I feel like this gives very much outer self energy. So perhaps an image of yourself that you don't want to leave behind, that you're having trouble. Ooh, that gave me chills. This is not a personal reading. Anyway, um, that gave me chills because it's like you're, you're not wanting to, okay, ego is the word that just popped in. Um, you're not wanting to leave that part of yourself, that external kind of image. I just had to check to make sure that everything is in view. Um, that, that external image of yourself is, I feel like, what this is kind of saying. Like there's an internal you that I feel like it's encouraging you to focus on. 
um, and embrace that the the youthful qualities that you possess and kind of carry them forward on your journey. Um, but the difficult thing that you're leaving behind is that outer self, right? It's almost like this is the inner inner self of this same character. That's what I'm getting from this. Um, and it's, it's talking to me about leaving, leaving behind your outer self. And like, it's like the characters on the outside of, um, of the, the main character here, they're, like they're looking, it's like, they're looking at, like all eyes on you is kind of what I'm getting from that. So it's like what other people perceive of you is what you're having trouble leaving behind. Now, I also have to point out that the world card is the last card in the major arcana. Um, that is the end of the cycle. Oh, chills again. Um, like I was saying about the cycle energy of the circles, anything that's a, a ring or a circle gives me that, that, that cycle energy. Um, so the world card uh, would indicate like the end of a cycle where you're about to embark on a new journey, a closing of a chapter. Um, so I find it very, very um, interesting. I don't believe in coincidences. Obviously, we're here reading the tarot because we want the messages um, and we want to feel that like aha connected kind of energy from it. And, and boy, am I getting that because this is the beginning of the journey that you're setting out on. This is what you're looking forward to in the month of April. This is where um, you're, you're looking to be headed or where you're being invited by spirit, your higher self, etc. cetera, um, to uh, enter into. Um, and this is what you may struggle to leave behind. Um, and that is that ending of the cycle. You're, it's almost like there's a little bit of a fear. I'm not getting fear from any of these cards, but intuitively I'm feeling like there's like a, maybe a fear of leaving behind, um, what, what you worked hard to, it's like you worked hard to, um, provide or exude a specific, energy or, or perception. Like you worked hard to build your external, uh, pers like how other people perceive you. Um, and so because you worked so hard at setting yourself up to be perceived in a certain way that it's, it's kind of hard to leave that behind because you've kind of invested yourself. Like it's been a long journey. This is the end of the journey. It's, it's almost like a, a fear or discomfort associated with, um, allowing yourself to reinvent who you are as a person. Uh, that's very interesting that that one is there. So the next card is going to go beneath the fool card. And that is what's below the surface. What's preventing the leap, your shadow aspects. This is, this should be the deepest card of the reading, but so far I'm feeling those were pretty deep. So what's beneath the surface preventing a leap of faith. Four of cups. Okay. <laughs> just a minute ago I was like this is not a personal reading I did this spread for myself um when I you know when they commented um about you know a reading that we could use the full card for and this card came up in this position it's so funny so um yeah uh, <laughs> so generally I know how this specifically applies to me but let's go general and we're talking about you um this is uh, the, the part of yourself that is just, again, with that, not wanting to leave behind all the work you put into being how you're being perceived. Um, this is like that, uh, that comfort zone, right? This is your, this is like the comfort zone. And I know this card is supposed to be the comfort zone here that you're having trouble leaving, but this is more like why you're having trouble leaving that. And it, you're just comfortable. It's like uh, this card has always said to me, like, I'm not accepting new offers, I'm, I'm good with, uh, me, myself, and I down here. I don't know. Does it go all the way down there? Yeah, it does. Let me scoop these up just a smidge. Um, but this is like me, myself, and I, you, not interested. Um, so this is like, to me, now this is supposed to, again, be the deepest, um, meaning card for this spread. And so however this might apply to you, I, I would maybe, if you're watching this reading, take a moment to maybe look at the card, screenshot, zoom in, whatever you, you want to do to see if there's anything in here that, that like strikes you. Um, because this channel is all about inspiring something that might help you on your journey. I'm not a teacher, 
not teaching anything. I'm just here to pass along information that um, I'm guided to share with people because it may help someone. Um, and so if there is something that you see in this card that may resonate specifically for you, um, if you want to look up the meaning of the Four of Cups um, and get some other perspectives on what that could um, be providing as far as uh, what's preventing you from taking the leap. And, and what I will say, I, I'm going to invite you to look up the meaning of that card because as it was indicated in the, the, the comment um, explaining the spread, this should develop slowly within you. This is something that you should um, feel, I guess, deeply. Uh, so yes, um, so what I'm going, how I'm going to interpret it for you, if you choose not to do that, that's fine, um, is that there it's, it's, it's almost like you felt like you were already whole. You had your mind, body, spirit, right? Me, myself, and I, no thank you to you. Um, mind, body, spirit, the, 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 the three, we have like the Trinity in this four card. It's almost, it's like, it, so I really want to focus on the three aspect of this four card because it is separated in that way. Um, the, the three, like you're feeling this, this is again, the similar, like this could be the same person, um, or the same figure, but, um, that three, you know, the, the Trinity, we have like, uh, your mind, body, soul, me, myself, and I, there's a lot of ways you can pull that three. The three energy for me talks about like, um, building, right? This is where you're putting a plan into action. Um, as we can see, this is not an action card. It is a four. That's why. Um, so, um, that, that fourth comes in and it's almost like a no thank you. Um, there's something within you that is just content with, oh, I, I like the words that want to come out of my mouth are living a lie, but I don't feel like you're living a lie. Um, I feel like there's like a facade. That's the word that just popped in my head, my head. Um, it's like, um, it's almost like there's like a protective facade. Okay. So four, if we move from the numerology for me of three into four, four is more of a stable energy. So this is like, I'm good, right? This is saying I'm good. No, thank you. I'm stable with what I have. I can provide for myself. I'm building my own thing. Um, so this is like wanting to stay. So if we look at the other fours in the tarot, the four of pentacles is holding on to something like he's hugging a pentacle. He has a pentacle under each foot. Like nobody's going to steal anything from him. It's like holding on to something. Um, like I feel stable here, and I don't want to let this go. Um, if you, if 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 I let this go, I'm not going to know what to do with myself. I'm I'm not going to know what direction to go. I'm not going to know what to do. Um, so this is almost giving me uncertainty. Um, as it applies to the spread, as what's below the surface, what's preventing you from moving forward or trusting yourself or taking a leap of faith, um, is that, that, that comfort again, from that comfort zone, uh, you have built an external reality that you are, it's like, here's a new reality. These are the ones that you've stacked in front of you. You've built this reality, right? And it's like, I'm, I don't want to accept I don't know what's in that cup because my eyes are closed in this card, right? Yeah, eyes are closed. It's like, I don't know what's in that cup. So I'm not going to, um, I'm not, I don't think I'll be accepting that offer. offer. Uh, so it's, it's kind of almost the unknown is what's uh, preventing the leap. Um, and like the fool is all about trusting. So the last card for this spread <clears throat> is going to be help from your higher self or your future self. Okay. So what advice would the higher self or future self have for this person? 10 of wands. Okay. It's, it's, it's going to be a burden and be willing to put in the work. It is going to take a lot of work, but I feel like your future self is saying you can handle it. You can handle this work. Um, I'm also getting something about the pace. 
So um, I, I'm not really getting a direction like, you know, like pick up the pace or um, a steady pace. Okay, as soon as I said those words, that kind of felt better. Um, so I feel like it's a slow and steady wins the race. Thank you. Um, slow and steady wins the race. You can do this. You are capable of doing this, and but it is a lot of work. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's what I have for this particular spread. If you're going to stick around for the next one, I'm going to clear the table. We'll be right back. All right, now we're going to do the second one. This is the one from Labyrinthos. It is, I think it's just called this, the Fool spread. Um, if you wanted to look it up, this deck, coincidentally, I picked this deck because I like this deck and I felt like it would be a good representation. Um, this deck features two full cards. It has a full and in a full 2.0. So let's see if either of those come up. This one does not require us to separate out the full. We're just going to shuffle and shuffle and deal. <laughs> Dealing tarot cards. It feels like, like a drug dealer. Like I'm, I'm, I'm selling tarot cards. Deal the cards. Anyway, they used to play poker a lot, so. That's probably where that came from in my subconscious. All right, so position number one at the top is going to be the adventure that awaits you to explore. All right. Adventure awaits. The Eight of Wands. Um, this is some manifestation energy for me that Eight of Wands has always reminded me. Okay, first of all, eight on its side is the infinity symbol. We all kind of know that. Um, for me personally, the way I remember this card, um, it always reminds me when I see the sticks lined up like that, or the wands, um, or the stakes, or whatever you want to call it, rods. <laughs> there are several different words for that in the, in the tarot. Um, it always reminds me of Abraham Hicks, um, Esther Hicks, saying, you know, you're launching rockets of desire. And depending on the deck, they're either going out and being launched or they're coming in. And I'm getting this coming in energy. It's almost like he's running from them, though, in this in this deck, which is very interesting. Um, but the Eight of Wands for me is about manifestations coming in for you. Um, so this is a new adventure for you to explore. <clears throat> it's kind of cute because it looks like he's on an adventure. <laughs> um, he's a turtle with a little, uh, with his little turtle shell, but the suspenders kind of make it look like a backpack, right? Like he's going on this adventure. This looks very adventurous. Uh, so, but yes, um, eight of wands giving me the energy of manifestations coming in for you. So I feel like some things that you have put out, um, that you want to experience, those are the adventures that are com that are coming for you or that you're coming for, really. And then, so let's move on to the next one. The position. The position. So context. Context for current energy is how I wrote that. Uh, so <laughs> this is like your current energy context. This is where you're coming from into this new adventure, in my opinion there. All right. Okay. Cut. Temperance. So I feel like the, the energy that you're trying to come from is, uh, is balanced, right? This is a, like slow and steady again. Okay. That's kind of interesting. If you are one of the people who chose to watch both readings, this phrase came to me in the other reading, if you didn't. Um, and that was slow and steady wins the race, which is kind of funny because we have a turtle here running. Eh. Um, so the temperance card represents, you know, uh, not just balance, but also moderation. Um, and um, I, I have to explain this because I, I need to find another way to explain this. It always triggers tempering in cooking or baking. If you're making something like a custard, like if you need to put raw eggs into a hot thing, if you just chucked them in there, they would scramble. So you have to, what is called temper it. Also tempered class. It's treated specifically to withstand um, impact, basically, which is kind of the same thing that happens in the cooking scenario. In the cooking scenario, what you would do is bring the eggs closer to the temperature of what you're adding it to. 
So it's you have to add a little bit of the heat to the eggs, stir it in a little bit more. You're bringing that temperature up almost to meet the other temperature, right? So it does have that balance aspect to it, but it's about taking precautions or taking steps in ensuring that it's not going to scramble. Same as tempered glass. You, the manufacturer takes te- steps and procedures to ensure that uh, it's going to withstand impact. Similar energy. Um, that's what the temperance card, temperance card really means um, for me as a reader intuitively. It's not just like the, the balance trope. Um, this is about coming from a position of methodical, procedural ways to um, reduce damage, we'll say. So that's the position that you're currently um, coming from, is what I'm seeing here. So the next card is going to be the risk. What is on the line? What is on this line in this new Eight of Wands adventure? The King of Pentacles. Okay, I'm going to like... King of Pentacles. Um, what's on the line there? Uh, uh, there could be money on the line. There could be the king, the court cards can represent a person, an actual person in your life. So there could be a person on the line. It, I mean, it could be about uh, leaving a person, uh, uh, really. Um, or going on this adventure may trigger a person in your life. Um, somebody mature, possibly somebody with money. So this could be like a parental figure. Um, kind of uh, practical, kind of older person, maybe experienced, um, is like, yeah, no, I can't go on that with you. I can't go on that journey with you. Um, that's for you to explore and I am not going anywhere. I'm going to stay on my throne. Um, let me know how it goes. Um, so that could be the scenario. Um, other, other than a person in the court card, um, I could see this being, um, really just, uh, about, money and and practicality because it is earth energy and the earth is like that stable kind of energy um yes it rotates and it's flying through the universe um but for our human experience uh the earth never leaves our feet i mean except for when we jump or fly whatever you get my point um <laughs> but the earth is that stable energy it's practical energy it's um Almost logical, but not quite as logical as swords energy where you're kind of more in your mind. This is about what what kind of connects you, what what feels stable to you. Um, so there is a little bit of a stability aspect um, that you could be risking um, by taking this adventure. This adventure looks good, though. So it, it, it's kind of up for you to decide whether or not the adventure, adventure that April is bringing is, is worth the risk. Um, so we have some more cards to hope figure that out for you. The fourth card is going to be the foundation. This is, you relied on this, but leave it behind. So this is something that you've relied on, that stable energy I was talking about before, um, that you, but you, you leave it behind for this adventure. So what are you leaving behind? Like what foundational aspects of your life are going to be changing? This is what's risking. So this is a maybe. This isn't a, you're going to have to leave someone behind. You're going to have to leave stability behind. You're going to have to leave money behind. That's, this is a risk. This is a possibility that this may not go with you on the journey. That's all that is. That's just a risk. It doesn't have to be lost. This this is the foundation. Um, this is like the foundation that is kind of changing for you. Page of Swords. Now, this could be another person. Um, pages are traditionally associated with youthful people. Um, court cards typically traditionally indicate a person. Pages being a young person, a student, etc. And what was I saying about swords before? This is more logic-based um, practicality. Like, this is physical practicality, practicality, and this is logical makes sense kind of practicality, right? Um, so <clears throat> that the foundation, this is something that you've relied on, like a youthful spirit, um, having thoughts, right? With the swords, we're talking about thoughts and that air energy. Um, this is like maybe a way of thinking that, uh, you may have to leave behind a 
young way of thinking, if you want to put it that way. Um, this, this is, uh, the foundation basically that you've been working on, you know, up until this point that, um, that may be changing for you. So maybe you relied on your, your thoughts or your youthful inspired thoughts, or, um, maybe even like naive kind of, um, trusting thoughts. Um, but the books in here also, remind us that um the page is a student the page is a, a learner um so it's this this learning foundation you know this could be wow this is very specific but this just came in this just came in this just in no anyway that was dumb um this is very specific but i feel like um if you're graduating this year graduating high school graduating college graduating trade graduating um the martial arts academy, whatever. If you're graduating something, I feel like this can be very specific to that. Um, because that's really what I'm like very strongly popping in right now. Um, and that is like the page is the learner, the student, and this is like going off on that adventure and this, like I said, parental energy. So if this, let's just use the example of, as of a high school graduate, this is like that graduating energy, you're leaving school behind. You're you're no longer this student, this page, this apprentice. Um, that's what you're leaving behind. You're leaving behind a student mentality. You're 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 still learning lessons, absolutely, because there's there's no way to not learn lessons in life. Every experience is a lesson. Um, but that the structured learning, I feel like is something that you're leaving behind. Also, um, collectively, um, uh, seeing a lot of people wanting to start homeschooling. So if you're not a student, that storyline doesn't apply to you. Like I said, that's very specific. So probably not for a whole lot of people. Um, but this could also be indicating, you know, um, like a journey, journeying into homeschooling and leaving behind some type of school, um, aspect there. Uh, but that's like the foundation. This is what you've relied on for so long. And that, that's just like being a constant learner. Um, so yeah, that's what I feel like is like the foundation that, that is going to probably be changing if you uh, entertain this. So the next card is going to be the warning. Um, this is where your uh, vulnerable possibilities are. Um, this is where you may want to be alert. Um, any possible hiccups along this journey through the month of April. Okay. Knight of Swords. Look at that. It's like the Knight of Swords is coming after this Page of Swords. Um, so yes, uh, be on the lookout. Um, be on the lookout for... Uh, not adversaries is the word I want to that, that wants to come to mind. Again, another court card. This could be uh, a person in your life that is coming for you. Um, swords and words. Like, I don't know why I've been reading. I, I caught my first tarot deck. I don't know. 24 years ago is, is a rough estimate. I was 16 and now I'm 40. Um, swords and words. <laughs> swords are about communication. The air element is communication, learning, knowledge, thoughts, things that have to do with your mind. Um, so, uh, words would be one of those things. Cause you know, only for a very few people, do you say things without thinking of what you want to say first? Uh, it comes into your brain before it comes out of your mouth. But anyways, so, um, what I'm getting at is, is words and communication. Like, there may be words that are coming at you uh, that you should be alerted to. Like, be mindful and aware of how you're speaking, but also how people are speaking to you. Because I feel like this gives me like kind of like a battle energy, um, almost like an attack of words. Kind of what I'm getting there, like a, a battle of words. Um, so mind your communication. Um but also this could, because we are talking about, when I was talking about lessons here with the, the swords being about learning and knowledge, um, I almost feel like there's, there's like a lesson that m might be a hiccup or might be con considered a hiccup. Like, like almost like there's a lesson you're like, oh, 
I learned my lesson. Like you may find yourself saying that phrase. I learned my lesson. And then that kind of prevents you from further progressing on this adventure. Okay. So I'm kind of getting that as a little bit of a possible hiccup, but also I'm just getting words and like all I can see now. And I don't know why I never connected that. Um, I was today years old. Um, swords is words. Um, and all I can see is words. Like I don't even see the S and it may be the font that they used. Um, and that's why, but all I'm seeing is words here. So, um, with the warning position, vulnerabilities, um, is going to be, I feel like communication words are going to be important, possible hiccups, things to be alerted to or alert about, um, is going to be more on the communication side of the lessons. Um, because just cause I, the interaction of those two is like hands down in the lap, hand up, sword drawn, um, almost like an un unexpected, uh, words word salad is the phrase that came to mind. All right. So the last card for this one is a helping hand. So, um, trust where, what, what you can trust, where you can find resources and possibly advice. In the strength card. Okay. Okay. Um, I like that. So again, that helping hand strength, your inner strength. Okay. Your strength comes from you. You can trust yourself, your strength, and there's more eight energy because the strength card is the eighth in the meter arcana. Um, so, um, I find it very interesting that in this deck they have, it's almost like I'm getting wolf in sheep's clothing energy. Um, also black sheep kind of energy. Um, it, that takes strength, right? To be the black sheep, to own your black sheepness. Um, that takes strength. Um, my typical little spiel with the strength card is that the strength isn't, because normally you would see a lion in this card, um, being almost like tamed by a dainty female. Um, and you would think that the lion is the resemblance, is what's resembling strength, but it's really the, the dainty feminine energy that is kind of taming the lion. That's where the strength is. So it's more about, um, strength coming from what's gentle. And I have to share this and I've been looking for a way to share this. I saw a TikTok not too long ago, maybe two or three days ago, um, of a mom sharing that her son, her child, um, said, um, what is the strongest thing in the world? And she was like, I don't know, bud, why don't you tell me? Like thinking it was like a riddle or something. And what he said was, and I'm getting chills about to say it, um, a pillow. Because you could beat a pillow, you could hit a pillow with a sledgehammer, and it would still be a pillow. The strongest thing in the world is a pillow, because it will, you can, you can, like, and if you think about it, you know, we, when we say ways to deal with your anger, you know, like, punch a pillow, because a pillow always comes back. So sometimes the soft things, like this little black sheep and this, this soft clothing here, that's where the strength comes from. And being gentle with yourself and being gentle with people because, and I say this all the time with the strength card as well, um, it takes a hell of a lot more strength sometimes to be nice to people than it would be to just throat punch. You know, like, I, just just saying, like, it's a lot easier sometimes to just haul off and smack someone when they've, they've like done you wrong, that's easy. Holding your tongue, biting your tongue and, and keeping your composure, that is hard work. So, um, that's, that's how I want to wrap up. That's a good final card for that reading. Um, just that be gentle with yourself. That is your helpful advice. You can trust yourself. Resources are going to come from gentle sources. Um, and, and that's like the advice that we would have here. For just a general recap, I feel like the the adventure you're heading on for April is one full of manifestations, is full of things that you have um, expected to come to you um, and, and trusted the universe to bring to you. Uh, the, the way you get there, you know, your current position on, on how to maintain is through um, 
methodical processes that will keep you stable. Like, um, again, with that um, strength card, like these go hand in hand for this reading in that uh, tempered glass um, example where, you know, they temper glass by like, I don't know what the exact process is, but there's a process. They like heat it and cool it or whatever they got to do, but they make it extra strong um, uh, to withstand impact. Uh, so that's what we're, I feel like is a, like a focus for your current position, what your energy is like going into it. Um, risk what's on the line, maybe a little bit of stability. Things might get a little bit wonky. Um, maybe, but that's just a maybe it's a risk. Are you willing to risk stability? Are you willing to risk, um, a stable person? If that applies, um, are you really willing to risk that? That is something that you need to ask yourself. Um, at the foundation of this is, is that learning, right? Um, there's always lessons. There's uh, a lesson. This is what you've always relied on is being able to access information. That may be something that is not going to be able to be taken with you on this journey. Um, that's uh, what you rely on. Um, possible warnings, words, just don't get into any, any, arguments uh, is is kind of like the advice or the uh, uh, warnings there for that um, possible hiccups could be just like arguments or maybe even conflicting knowledge um, which I guess would lead to our arg argument and your helping hand comes from your your inner strength just keep an eye on that inner strength so that's what I have for the second portion of the reading thank you for watching if you watched both let me know which one um, you liked better uh, whether it resonated more or not. Uh, if you don't want to share their personal information, that's fine. Um, let me know which one you liked better. Um, if you like this uh, Ouija board altar cloth, I designed it. It's in my Etsy shop. The link's in the in the description. You know what to do if you uh, like this video and you want it to reach more people. Uh, so that is what I have for you. Always remember that the magic you seek is within you and you have a blessed day.